looked into the it. first one. I know quite a few of them which try to build upon a stack of open source, and uh, the the issue is, the issue they have, I think, is capital. Because uh, I mean, look at who they compete with. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, how much how much do you think Sony spends on just uh, doing the PlayStation Four if if they do it eventually? I I, I probably will. I, I'm not sure Xbox is going to have a successor because. Uh, uh, I, I, for all kinds of reasons, but that's a different story. But. Well, what I'll, what I'll do first, for those who don't know what we're talking about, um, this was a link that uh, Roy posted uh, to a news group, which I've followed and had a look at, so I have a particular interest in uh, games consoles and uh, homebrew, for want of a better word, development on consoles. And it's called uh, the Usebox. And it's, it's basically a, an open source uh, console. It's 8-bit. It's got 256 uh, colours um, and four channels of sound with an SD card interface which um, you can load your games from. Now of course this is, we're not talking PS3 in terms of uh, in terms of resolution or processing power. But it's a, it's a console with a great ethos because the whole idea behind it is that you can take this hardware and you can make adapt it into something else or you can use it as a console or you can develop for it. And it gives people the opportunity to try the hand at console development which from what I understand and from what I've seen from speaking with other developers, is a very different beastie to uh, developing on a, on a PC. Um, so it's, it's completely open source. It costs very little because the uh, obviously it's, it's a hobbyist project and it allows you to, to create your own software for it and it's got an emulator for Linux which allows you to test your code before you put it onto the, the SD card and um, try it on the console. So I'm very excited about this type of project because I until recently... I uh, found, I'm just wondering, and I think I should mention that, uh, I posted two links today to do with consoles and games with Linux. One of them is a handheld, uh, handheld um, device, <clears throat> which some people think is a vaporware, and that's supposed to cost between $15 to $20 for a whole console, like a, uh, like a Nintendo uh, DS or something. Uh, I, I don't really think they have any details, very specific details, just yet about it. Uh, and there were some, some of these before, but they usually cost like almost 120 pounds, like 180 dollars or even more. Uh, the GP, GP2X something, something like that, GPS. And one, the, I think the successor was called, uh, Pandora. So Pandora, I think, sold quite a few units, and, and it's a really nice team. I, I saw one of the guys who they actually make them at the at the office and ship them, and it's 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 a really nice project, but uh, in this case, uh, I think you're talking about a proper kind of console, yeah? No, the use box um, it, it, it's, um, it's a do-it-yourself kit, so you can actually buy it pre-made. Ah, I see. Um, yeah. So, the, yeah, it's, um, it's a do-it-yourself kit. It's available for around $70. The only problem being, at the moment, for us UKers, is that uh, the version and the components that are out at the moment do not ha- are not uh, catering for a uh, UK volts. TV, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and it, for, for UK television. At the moment, yeah. well, now I about the uh, PSU. Um, well, I didn't think that was relevant anymore. I thought the days of the Super Nintendo and having your PAL and NTSC version were, com- you know, completely gone because televisions now can handle uh, any any resolution and any refresh rate that you uh, throw at them. So I didn't think it was an issue. But um, apparently, there's going to be a UK version or a UK built version following very shortly. Um, but the nice thing about it is, is that there's many people out there who always dream of trying their hand at writing a, a a console project and yes true you're not going to be writing for the ps3 you're not going to be producing a title which is going to go to millions of adoring fans and be mentioned on bbc click but the actual experience of writing software um that you can get from this type of project is second to none there's no risk here there's no expensive hardware or development kits to buy you literally pay 70 dollars which i'm roughly guessing is probably about 40 40 or 50 uk pounds it's um, also very easy to share these things these yeah. days because of the internet so you can uh any person who's interested, you will be able to give me your URL and say, just get this code and put it, you know, and which, and which you, couldn't, you couldn't do before. I mean, I've always, like I said, I've always had a keen interest in just a, a few minor um, musings and messings about with uh, with console development. But, of course, you're very restricted with many of today's uh, platforms. For example, the Nintendo DS, the only way you're able to develop for that as a home user is with an R5 or something very similar, um, which isn't ideal because it's not authorized by Nintendo. There's no su- official support there, and it's a very messy way of realizing your, your project ideas for, for a games console. And I think there was an article recently, there's um, 
the debate going on about opening up the PlayStation 3 for homebrew developers and home users that want to develop software. Oh, and this is news from 2006. No, it's no, really weird. No, this was this was recently. It's um, yeah. it, it's come back again. It, it's it's like reopening. Yeah. I could find your headlines from back in 2006 it's... when the when Sony was creating quite a bit of hype about the PlayStation 3 being for homebrew developers and Linux, and you can install anything you want on it. I mean, that to me is an excellent uh, feature for Sony to incorporate, and I can't understand why that they haven't done that. It's not going to uh, it's not going to be detrimental to the security of Sony's console because we've already seen now that that's been completely blown away by a, a couple of people in in the states. It's not going to affect any sort of piracy statistics that they want to throw at uh, as a response to not having it at an open console. But what it does do is it gives somebody an extra avenue of entertainment on a console. Now, yeah, that's just niche uh, a, a component or feature. So. I, I believe what they worried about at first is the production costs of the early PlayStation 3s, and, mm. and especially if people are starting to buy these things instead of to uh, use it as a, an incubator for games or a device for. Mm. So, you know, they, they probably call it consume games. Yeah. Uh, people buy it, we just put it in server rooms and try to crank out as many. I, I, th- I think you, you, you've hit upon a point there, because I think maybe Sony is apprehensive to allow homebrew developers because their fear would be that everybody would be sitting at home trying to you know to, to write a game and not buying more titles which they're going to make uh, money from um, which might sort of shift the the dynamics of the PlayStation market a little bit if it's, yeah exactly so so there is a I mean there is sense behind it but I mean the shame was with the PlayStation 3 in particular is that if you were to with when it was running Linux and um, you, you had Linux on there if you threw a keyboard onto it and hooked it up to your HD television, effectively you had a desktop, uh, a desktop machine. Albeit it wasn't particularly uh, quick. I wasn't that impressed with Linux running on uh, the PlayStation 3, but it was effectively a desktop machine, which would alleviate the need in the average household for another uh, desktop uh, device, a desktop machine. And Sony really could have capitalised on that by producing the one and only answer to everybody's ed- ed- entertainment needs. Yeah, on one device. Um, one of the issues they had was the keyboard wasn't so much of an issue. You could always just plug no. a USB keyboard. But it's, the uh, the issue they had was access to the uh, graphics capability. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, can you do you maybe know why it relates to security and why the I, I was I always remember the reason for them removing the Linux facility was a very vague and it was to. Uh, they mentioned security. I, I can't think remember. Uh, one of the things they did was people would put a DVDs in and try to do dumps of the contents in the DVDs. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Maybe proceed to try to decrypt these uh, with some codes or something. But, uh, and I think that's the point where they were concerned about what people could do on the machines with access to the hard drives and the machines with. But you see, even I mean, even now, you I mean, the, the one thing that the uh, the PlayStation 3 in particular is very good at is on a USB stick you can throw in um, any sort of media and it usually, well every time I've tried it has detected it, what it is and plays it no problem at all. I would suggest if they have an issue with dumping you know, and that was their reason, it could very easily be achieved in a desktop machine copied onto a portable memory stick or some other storage device and then copied uh, in the same way anyway. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know whether the, whether they envisaged future problems with Linux on there which would require them to do further updates to their firmware and that was something that they saw as being costly and wanted to remove uh, Linux from there before it did start the problem, I don't know um, but they were always very vague on why Linux was removed but to be fair to them, it wasn't a big issue for me because it certainly wasn't my uh, it wasn't a draw for me as to why I bought the PS3, it was an added extra but not um, not a main reason um, but yeah, like I say, so going back to the development, it's, uh, this console will be very good. There'll be a link on the show note. Um, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll get a little bit of a, a larger following. It's already got a very thriving community, uh, according to the uh, blurb I'm reading, and there's quite a few people involved. And creating games, sharing ideas, sharing code. It's really something that you can't make a comment on until you've actually tried it. Go, going back to the days of the Amiga when we were writing routines and code and somebody would develop a new type of technique or a, a new effect and people go, go, wow, and you show, share the code and then it, it would be a learning experience as well. And there's, it really is a very rewarding pastime and it's something that everybody should at least try before uh, turning their nose away and saying, no, I don't want to program. I like 
just playing games. So it's hopefully it'll see some uh, a lot of response and uh, get a lot of enthusiasm. I'm certainly going to look at buying one of the kits uh, to build myself, and uh, I'll let everybody know how it gets on with it because uh, yes, it seems like a very interesting